There we go. So I just armed it here. This is throttle and this is uh, gonna be roll. All right, so before continuing on, a huge shout out to our sponsor, PCBUA, for sponsoring our open hardware flight controller. This is a great place to have your PCB manufactured as well as assembled with great quality and fast service. They also provide a 24 hour express service if you are in a hurry and want your projects in your hands as soon as possible. Hey, what is up, guys, and welcome back. So, today we have a new project on our hand. And it's a very, very simple project. Now, what I'm going to show you today is how to enable you to fly any quadcopter or any RC model from the cars, even the toys with a PlayStation 3 controller. Now you might say, what the hell is the use for that? Well, the, this, there might not be a lot of use for just the average user, but for example, someone who only has, or is able to only use one hand, this is really great because what he can do is it'll also enable him to fly with one hand just like this. And you might say, how can he do that? Well, you can do throttle here, yaw here and pitch here forget roll he's going to be flying in angle mode with his goggles on and that should do just fine that should get him up in the air and he can if he's able to use one more finger then he can put the yaw here and then put the roll here like we usually fly and keep the throttle up here so this will enable a person who is currently unable to fly to fly again and that is the aim of this project and at the same time for other people to get you introduced into electronics and help you do this so i've been actually flying with this in the shop with the throttle here and it's really fun and it's really good. Now, in terms of latency, I'm not doing any sensitive flying. I'm just flying angle mode around the shop. And I don't notice any of the latency that you would normally think you might notice, like when you're flying from a quadcopter with a phone. So you're not going to have any of that. You're going to have a really good experience. Which I had a really great experience. I've been playing with it all day just to make sure everything is functioning here. And the code is so simple to modify and I'll show you and I'll get into it. So it'll even enable you to do whatever you want with this setup. Now you, you're you not just limited to PlayStation 3 controllers. You can do Xbox controllers, PS4 controllers. There's a library already set up for those things in place. However, if you wanted to bring in your own custom controller, you can kind of code it yourself in a way. They kind of have great documentation on how to go about doing that. However, if you are truly um, disabled and you don't know how to code and you know there's a specific controller that you are able to use, uh, talk to me on the Discord and then I'll try to get that controller in and I'll write the code for you. And that I'm pretty sure will help a lot of other people because I, I can't, I can only, I can't imagine to be honest. I, this is all, this is the best thing that came to my mind right now. But you can use PC joysticks to fly your RC airplanes. Or uh, even, you know, the, the car thing to, to drive your cars around. You can do anything. It's, it's just remarkable what you can do with this. So the way this works is it'll take the USB input. The library will decode all the buttons and we tell each button what to do in the a PPM value. It's very simple. I found a PPM script online. I have everything linked over there. But what I did was I merged the library of the USB host shield with the PPM script and I'm able to just output PPM to a multi-protocol module. Now talking about the multi-protocol module, this is very good for a couple reasons. One, you will be able to bind FlySky, FRSky, and a shit ton of other toys and protocols on these guys. So that's a huge plus. Not only that, if you wanted some kind of like a long range TBS crossfire thing, and this will even work for that. This will connect perfect on the TBS crossfire through the PPM mode. And you might say, well, how the hell do I bind? Well, there's a bind button right here, and there's a bind button on the TBS Crossfire, and there's also a bind button on the R9M. There's a special way to get the R9M to work in PPM mode. Just read the instruction manual, and you'll figure it out. And they all have bind buttons here, and that's how you'd bind them. So, that out of the way, because I know I get that question quite a lot here. So, the way that I've set this up currently is if you do L1, it'll disarm. R1 would arm. So if you, if you, for example, if you're looking at the beta flight configuration tab when you're setting your modes, you can see the line go left and right. So this is left outs off and then R1 will turn it on, it means arm it. And the way to connect this is all you need is this shield right here and you put it on top of the Arduino Uno and then two wires and some sort of external 3S LiPo. And the reason for the external 3S LiPo is because these uh, need six plus volts to turn on. They won't boot up off of the five volts that you're going to be giving this guy. So let me show you an example. Let's set this up before we get into, uh, I'm gonna show you how to set this up in the hardware perspective before going into the code here. 
So let's get started here. First thing we want to do is we want to grab our multi protocol module. This is basically like a naked version of this one here. So this is what I'm using. And uh, it's easier to see here. So we have these pins here or these holes for our female pin headers here. And it's the same thing on this right there. The uppermost one is the PPM. So we're going to say uh, purple is PPM just because it's P, it starts with a P. And then what we're going to need is also ground, which is the fourth pin down. And it's the same thing on this one. You just count the fourth one down, which would be ground. So these two wires are going to be connected to our Arduino host right here. So let's go ahead and set that up. Now, um, the ground, you, once you before, you before you put on the shield, everything is labeled there. So I already know where mine are. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this on ground. There we go. And then pin number three. So this starts from zero here. One, two, and then three. So that's all connected here. Very nice and simple. And now next step we need to do is to apply power to the uh, multi protocol module R9 MTBS Crossfire. It's all the same thing. Uh, pin number three is VCC. As you can tell, I've soldered a red wire here. And that's going to be the positive. And again, pin number four was the grounds because all grounds are going to be connected. So that's also soldered on pin number four here. And I just bring in my battery and I just apply power and boom, we just apply power. I've already bound this, so just use the bind button. Now for this one, I used uh, channel four. There's a little knob there that'll tell you. And they do come with the instruction manual. So just keep seeing which ones are the FR sky and switching through them until one of them binds. Next step, we need to apply power here. This is after you run the code or put the code on it. So right now we just applied power to the Arduino. Next thing we want to do is just connect the controller. So I'm going to connect it. It works via Bluetooth also, but I don't have a Bluetooth USB dongle. So I'm just going to be doing it the old fashioned way and just connecting it via wire. Now when you connect it, nothing will boot up. So none of the LEDs will light up, but it's okay. Just remove it. You'll see it blinking. So we know it's on. All right. So now, now for some reason, it just tells me that it's working. I uh, just, I guess it's a weird bug in the library, but it doesn't matter. Now we just power up the quadcopter. Okay. It's already bound. Now, sometimes it won't arm for me because this one is, you know, sometimes the throttle isn't on zero basically. So I have to keep playing with this until it arms. So I'm going to disarm first and then arm. See, and again, it didn't do that. So, okay. So I just have to keep playing with this because I dropped this controller. There we go. So I just armed it here. This is throttle and this is uh, going to be roll. I'll show you how to set these up. And I'm going to sh just. Sh here we go. I'm just going to press the throttle here. And now we're going to disarm. Okay. Awesome. The thing is, everything is so close to each other, but this works absolutely fine when I'm flying around the shop. And let's see. You can see it blinking when I'm trying to arm. But it's telling me what? Oh, there we go. It's just because of my button here. I'm going to try to fly it. Can you see that? And that's this arm right here. All right. So everything is working. It's working really, really great, actually. So and the latency and again, the latency is absolutely phenomenal. You don't really notice the latency. Um, I don't know if once you're hitting gates or using something bigger, you might notice some latency, but I think all it is is just the PPM latency. Nothing more, nothing less. This is running pretty quickly with the USB host shield. So we're all running over SPI and then converting it to PPM, which shouldn't really take that much. That's all the code is really doing. So it's, it's really nice and everything is hardware based. So it's, it's a lot faster than software. All right. So now I showed you how to connect this all up. Let's go ahead and go check how this is actually working in beta flight just to see the uh, the commands that I'm actually inserting here and how to reroute these if you ever wanted to. So let's go ahead and jump right into the coding part. All right, guys. So right now we have everything connected. I have the quad connected to beta flight here and we have we see the code here on the on the right. Now, if you take a closer look, I've set it up to the channel mapping AETR and this is what you see here. Now, if you are uh, for example, let's just take a closer look, T-A-E-R, then you could kind of figure out a way how to set this up. So it would be channel one, which would be T, and T is throttle. So you'd want to change this to zero here, and I'll explain this in a bit. So let's just keep it default, A-E-T-R, A-E-T-R, yeah, correct, all right? And now let's take a closer look at the code here. It's very simple. Uh, let's just scroll down. Now, it's set, I've set it up on a maximum of eight channels. I don't recommend you go any more than that. 
all of these are good this is the output pin it's pin number three on the arduino that's what we connected um so that's the output pin here and just forget any of these stuff here you're not going to need them but if we start going down to not the setup we need the void of the sorry the loop here we go so here we have our first start basically and let's start with the arming button so if we say ps3 get button l1 it'll set ppm channel this is five actually because in programming everything starts counting at zero so this is channel five ppm channel five set it to 1000 so if i were to go on the controller and press uh l1 here then what's going to happen is if you take a look at auxiliary one on beta flight it'll drop to zero basically it'll disarm boom can you see that and if i click r1 it'll arm and r1 is down here so if uh, ps3 get button click r1 set channel 5 to 2000 and that's what we see here this is channel 5 because you know auxiliary start counting from channel 5 and if we go to the modes you can see the auxiliary one obviously is channel 5 and you can see me press l1 you can see that little marker go left and then i press r1 and that marker goes right and you can also do the same thing with other buttons to enable angle mode horizon mode Whatever you want, you can do that. However, I've set mine just on basic angle mode. So here you would, if you wanted, for example, angle mode and uh, acro mode. Now let's go take a closer look at the roll and pitch and all these types of things here. So here we have channel zero, which is basically channel one. And if we take a closer look, it's A. So what is A? A is roll. So this is roll right now. And roll is on the right joystick on the X axis. So it's on this one right here x axis and you can see that it's not doing anything because so as you can tell this is the right axis which is the right joystick on the x axis and we can see the roll as you can tell right there now pitch is i think the next one over which is channel two here as you can tell pitch is uh channel two which is e a e t r and it's on channel uh, in the PPM value, it's on channel 2, and that's where it's correct because that's the second one over. And if you take a closer look here, you might not really notice it in the beginning, but you see that I've inverted the numbers on this because if I were to do it normally, like I would normally do it here, for some reason, the PS3 or the library does it invertedly, and this is the correct way because we want it when we go up, it, the, the value goes up, and when we go down, the value goes down, as you can tell right here for the pitch axes. And if we kept it default, 1,000, 2,000, for some reason, if you like to... For that to be inverted then you'd have to just flip these over here and uh, i've kept um a lot of notes everywhere hopefully it'll make sense to a lot of people um so as you can tell pitch axes on ps3 right joystick y ax uh the the y axis on the joystick there which is up and down inverted to work correctly that's the inverting right here so you can invert these if you wanted to just replace the 1000 with the 2000 don't touch anything before that because this is the value so basically what happens here is it'll get the value from the right joystick and it outputs between 0 and 255 and then we remap it between uh, 1000 and 2000 in order for it to work here in uh, the PPM mode basically. And that's what we need to set the PPM value here. Anyway, between 1000 and 2000 this will return that for us. And you'll actually see the same thing. And um, yeah, and here's the throttle. Throttle again, it's it's also, um, it's not like a single button, as you can tell right here. You can see that I can press it right there, and you can see the throttle going up and down. Here it's looking kind of buggy, but it's, it's really not that laggy. It's actually working really great. Um, and, well, I mean, that's all you really have to care about here. And you can change some other things also if you wanted to add some other things. So if you wanted, for example, to get what is the function to call the square button, what you want to do is after we install the library which i'll show you next you want to go to the examples and then you find usb host shield and you can see here we have ps buzz ps4 ps3 and we have some xbox stuff here so that's really nice so we're going to go to the ps3 example script i'm just going to open it here so you can see it and if we scroll down we can start seeing here's l2 here's r2 this is the function for it here's triangle circle so they're just calling it the same thing so for example, we wanted circle or let's just say square to be acro mode. So what we want to do is we'll just grab this function here. Let's just go ahead and grab that. Okay. So now we took the square function, or sorry, the square button. So we're going to say square and we're going to add one of these, sorry, like this. And we're going to say what it'll do is we're going to make auxiliary two 
become uh, the mode switch for us. So we're going to say PPM. So auxiliary 2 is what channel? That would be channel 6. So we will subtract one number and that would be 5 here. And then that would equals, and we're going to say for squares for acro mode. So we're going to put 2000 here, and then we're going to save it in a bit. So square, and we're going to say, um, we're going to copy that. We're going to put the cross here. Cross is going to be for angle mode. So we're going to set this to 1000. And this will make sense right now for you. So square is acro, and then um, cross is going to be for uh, angle mode. And the way to set this up is we're going to go to the modes and right here. So we said 2000, which is going to be square is going to set that to 2000. So that will be acro mode. We'll just put it like that. And then when you press uh, the X, it's going to drop this down to here. So it's going to be an angle mode. So I'm going to save this here and I'm going to upload this here. And we can actually watch this in action, which is really nice. All right, so now it's done uploading. Now, if we go here and we were to press cross, we should get angle mode. Boom. Can you see that? Angle mode just turned on. And if we press the square, that's acro mode. See that? There we go. Now we can switch between the modes. So you can do a lot of things like this. Hopefully, this will make sense. I'll also add the notes here for you. So this is, um, we'll call it auxiliary 2 um, angle mode set in beta flight so make sure you set these in beta flight other than that they're just not going to make any sense to anything and make sure you choose your mode before flying because it defaults on 1500 when it first boots so make sure you also set the mode so here we're going to call it uh auxiliary 2 because that's what this is uh upper bound which is 2000 uh we're going to call it acro acro mode and we're going to call this auxiliary 2 lower lower bound Okay, there we go. And that should, that looks really nice like this. So that kind of makes sense, hopefully. And yeah, we just saw that. I just flashed it and then I was able to change my configuration here. So it's very simple. I did keep somewhat of notes here. So if you ever get lost here, I actually set this up for you right in the beginning. So you have auxiliary one, which is channel five, which would actually be uh, PPM four. Channel six would be auxiliary two. Uh, obviously, we just set it right now. We're going to call it the modes, but I'm just going to leave it like that. So that would be PPM five. Channel seven would be auxiliary three, which is PPM six. And you see what I'm going with. You see how channel one, which is A uh, on the channel mapping, is actually zero because it starts from zero here. So hopefully that made sense. And I left the the the, um, the links to where I got these from the, the, the script as well as the library here now i want to show you how to install the library because that's a very important step to do so what you want to do is you want to go to this link here all right so to download the library i just edited the file uh when you first open the ps3 ppm file that i'll have on my github you'll see download library first so you want to click this it'll download a zip file make sure you know where you saved it and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to go to sketch and then you're going to go to include library and add zip library and once you do that then you just go ahead and look for where you downloaded it for example it's going to be in the download section and make sure you know where you downloaded it so you can just choose that and then it'll install it and that's all you got to do there's nothing else that needs to be done here and flashing you should be able to figure this out you know here we go boards arduino uno com port choose the correct com port if your quadcopter is connected it might screw you over i know my quads on 15 so here it's really nice it tells me it's the arduino uno and then you just flash this guy and you're good to go so basically after you flash him you go and set the, set up the uh beta flight like you would normally do with any other controller and that's all it is it's really that simple there's nothing to it if you don't know how to download the library and install it via zip file there's a bunch of videos online but it's really straightforward download this sketch include library add zip library and you're good to go and you just downloaded that and then once that's downloaded then you can flash this to your arduino uno and then modify these as you please and again if you wanted to add a special command you know if you if you don't know what uh, if you wanted the start button to do something uh all you got to do is go to file after you've installed the library go to examples and then yours is going to look different like a different type of list here but just look through your whole list until you find usb host shield and then ps3 and then that will bring us that uh that little script thingy 
uh, this is like a little example script here and you can pick whatever you know thing you want the up button on the d-pad turn on the led whatever you can do anything you want here that i don't recommend playing with the leds because i think there's some little bug which it kept screwing everything up for me so keep that in mind also and i've also added somewhat of a fail safe if you might say down here which is um if it just if the playstation 3 controller gets disconnected then it'll automatically disarm however the fail safes are still going to work at the same way they are uh that you've set up in your beta flight so if the connection is lost that's handled through the uh the receiver inside and beta flight also so keep that in mind as well and well that's really it it's really that simple guys i really hope you guys enjoyed it i'll have a link to everything down below make sure you choose the things from the list down below so you don't run into any issues or have to buy something all over again so and well that's it guys i really hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.